I never quite understood how to play with Barbies. I still don't. And when my parents gave me my first Barbie, in the process of trying to figure it out, I ripped its head off. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Thankfully, my parents accepted this. My dad's an engineer, so growing up, I was usually found building things with him, or having remote control car races, or watching Into the Universe. I also thought that Morgan Freeman was an astrophysicist. Not my brightest moment. At six, one trip changed my life. I was, um, my parents took me to the Kennedy Space Center, and I was able to witness a speech by an astronaut. Now, I don't remember the speech, but I do remember this autograph. It says, reach for the stars. I love the sound of those words, and ever since then, I've wanted to do exactly that. My passion for robotics stems from there. I love machines, and robotics is me being able to bring a set of pieces to life. A lot of my friends could never understand why I like something as boring as science with all those equations, but that depends on how you choose to define passion. Passion for me is something I could do for the rest of my life and not be bored. And the answer that comes to me immediately is using robotics to contribute to space exploration. Fortunately, I found a place to explore this uh, passion at 12. I joined a robotics team, this is them, and we've had the most incredible experiences together, being able to represent India in different countries and seeing other people our age and their ideas with robots. There's only one huge disadvantage to working with two really tall boys. They eat all your food. <laughs> Other than that, we've been working on a few projects over the past years that I'd like to share with you. Our first project was about improving lives. In our opinion, recreation is a right, but the need for recreation is severely overlooked, especially in the case of the differently abled. And we saw this when we visited the Happy Home and School for the Blind. We spent a day with the kids, and what we saw was that their version of fun was so limited. They played soccer, one of the most fun games, by just listening to a few bells. So we wanted to add recreation for them. We took a game that we all loved, air hockey, and we adapted it so that the visually impaired could play it. So this is us demoing it to a few people. It actually worked. And we'd realized we'd been able to make a difference when this 10-year-old little girl, she came up to me and she said, thank you for giving me fun. And that was my proudest moment. Something we'd made had been able to help this girl. Our second project, we wanted to help rekindle the interest of teenagers in India's cultural heritage. So we took a story we were all inspired by, Arjun from the Mahabharata hitting the eye of the fish. And we created a robot that mimicked this movement. We thought if we could tell this age-old story in a new medium, we could get kids like us to be proud of our heritage. Our third project, we wanted to make a robot that could be associated with a new quality, creative. We made a system of robots that as assembled a small-scale version of the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, with different colored blocks and different sized blocks to show the station's unique architectural influence. So two of the robots would um, sort the blocks, two of the robots would place them, and one of them would put it on the higher levels. And the idea was that these robots were working together to make a creative design. So these projects were about us trying to visualize the robots of the future as humanoid systems and to go beyond the notion that robots are simply precise and repetitive. And along the way, I noticed, and not that it deterred me, that's the great thing about science, it doesn't care who you are, but I noticed I was usually the only girl around in these situations the ratio in my physics class was 2 is to 19. 
And I couldn't understand why only boys seem to like robotics or science. To me, being able to program a robot to respond to human feedback or constructing mechanisms was fascinating, no matter who you are. But despite my various attempts to convert my friends to space geeks, it didn't work out. And it's not that they didn't like physics. It's just they didn't want to do it. And it seemed to me that people thought math is boyish. I don't agree. I think equations are really neat. E equals mc square. We've all seen it. But it's managed to simplify a hugely complex concept into just four symbols. So numbers are powerful. They make us less oblivious. So I was already considered unconventional being a girl interested in space and physics. But it got even more confusing when I told people I wanted to become an astronaut. They thought I was kidding. You want to go up there? Yes. What if you float off the moon? Gee, got to make sure the moon's gravity isn't running low that day. <laughs> and of course, there was always, what if you get sucked into a black hole? Thanks for the encouragement, guys. And I always wondered, why don't we all believe we can become astronauts? We're a population of one billion people. We've had three people go into space in the past 60 years. Yes, we now have a successful mission to Mars. And we have women working on these missions, and I'm so excited to see that. But we need to think differently. It's not just about launching satellites. We need to want to go out there ourselves and see what in the universe is going on. And I want to help build the robots of the future. And I want to be in one of those advanced pieces of technology, landing on Mars and finding the answers to the fundamental questions. And it all starts by knowing that it's OK to be that girl who drew planets instead of playing with Barbies. It's OK to be different, just like Spock's eyebrows, except with your dreams, not your face. Thank you. Thank you so much.